Hello there. Thank you so much for joining today's stream of 100 days. My name is Anais. I'm going to be your host for this show, 100 days. Specifically today, we're going to build a roadmap for the CNCF landscape. Now, if you've come across this channel before, you might have seen some of the trailers. Uh, specifically the trailer for this week and next week and the upcoming shows. So I highly suggest you to subscribe since I think there's something for everybody. Um, this is one show and then there are several different shows. Kat is going to have a show tomorrow, which is Kat's Classroom, where she's going to explore um, with the maintainers of different projects within the CNCF. I think specifically Sandbox projects, what their project is all about. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one starter guide. <laughs> now, if you're in the chat, maybe say hi, where are you from, just so I know who's there, who's present, who's listening in right now. Uh, again, my name is Anais, and uh, just some housekeeping items real quick before we get started. This is an official CNCF live stream, and as such, we are under the CNCF Code of Conduct. So please, if you get involved, and I hope you get involved in the chat, <laughs> uh, please bear that in mind and be respectful to each other in your questions and your comments and so on. Uh, hello there. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be really interactive. Um, what we're going to do today is we are going to look at the, well, the CNCF landscape. If you have never looked at it, if you're completely new to Kubernetes, to the CNCF and everything related, oh, there's a hair. Um, <laughs> then this is for you, as well as if you are already really familiar with all of this. This is also for you because I will need heavily, I will rely heavily on your input to uh, create a roadmap of such that uh, we can use as a starting point of where do you get started when you first want to look at different CNCF projects, when you want to familiarize yourself with the CNCF and the projects involved um, in future live streams. And this live stream is every two weeks. So again, subscribe if you want to stay up to date with those streams. Um, we are going to explore different projects uh, from a startup perspective of what are the resources that are available for you when you just first start looking at those different projects. What is the first onboarding experience to different projects? But to do that at the beginning, we want to get um, we want to have kind of an idea of uh, what are we actually looking at? So if you're in a chat right now, maybe you want to comment, do you have already experience um, with Kubernetes? Maybe give a one. If you don't have experience, maybe give a zero. That would uh, give a great indicator of me structuring the stream and the way I, I talk, I guess. <laughs> uh, you don't have to put in the chat, but it would be really amazing. I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat. So I will be seeing if you put anything in. So again, if you have any experience with Kubernetes and the CNCF, maybe give a shout out. Have you been to any of the CNCF events? Uh, live streams or similar or you're curious to just get started uh, yeah I would I would love to have your input in the chat so let's jump into um, my well my repository of getting started building a roadmap oh thank you for your input I don't know what's your ah Kunal I guess your name is Kunal um, basic uh, Kubernetes experience awesome that's that's great to hear uh, there's another stream by Sayam next week that's going to focus specifically on Kubernetes and getting started with Kubernetes and um, and related and preparing for exams so I highly suggest you to check that stream out as well if you're completely new to uh, Kubernetes or you want to improve your skills so again we are going to be creating a CNCF landscape roadmap of such. So when we go ahead and we look for CNCF landscape in this case, um, I'm just going to pretend I'm a complete beginner to this, such as like how many people probably are like many people are complete beginners when they first look at this. Um, so this is what we're going to be focusing on. But this is obviously when you first look at this, this is quite overwhelming, right? Um, <laughs> but when you want to get started with specific projects in this space, right, uh, you will need to start somewhere. And the most reliable source in that case is probably the CNCF land website and their resources. So let's go ahead and maybe check out just for CNCF and look at what resources we can find additionally um, to help us get started. Now, I have this repository here that I will fill later on with all the resources that I'm going to be looking at throughout the stream. So you can also check those out later on. Um, <laughs> they are all going to be here. Also, the 
roadmap that we're going to be creating. We're going to be drawing it here on Excalidra, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to be basically walking you through, through it. And you can also provide input on where you would get started, what projects you would use uh, for your own learning purposes and so on. So let's assume we are completely new to the CNCF and the CNCF landscape. And we want to get started learning about and learning about some of the projects. We might have some Kubernetes experience already. We might have taken some of the exams and we want to advance kind of to the next level or expand more our skills in contributing to open source and getting familiar with all those cloud native projects since we heard a lot about them, right? <laughs> so what we can do next is we look for, uh, we might Google CNCF and we come to the website and we're like, okay, cool. This sounds all amazing. Um, what they do is amazing. The different initiatives, great. So where do I get started? Projects. Okay, I want to look at different projects. Now I'm taking some uh, biased guesses here since I've already looked at some of those resources, obviously. Uh, but we're going to look at sandbox projects and then graduated and incubating projects uh, for starters, for example. And that might narrow down some of the projects we're seeing here. So sandbox projects, when a new project is going to get donated or onboarded to the CNCF and uh, bear in mind, I'm as new as you and most people are to this, most likely. I, again, comment in the chat if you have you already looked at this page um, or it's the first time that you're looking at this. I remember the first time I was going through these different resources and I was highly confused for a long time about the difference of sandbox and incubating projects. And we're gonna look at that in a second, a bit more detail. Um, but it's not as intuitive when you're just getting started. Yeah, Kuna, exactly. The landscape is really overwhelming. Um, so if you look at the sandbox projects, and those are basically the projects that are just getting started, that just have been uh, become part of the CNCF. And if Bill is watching, uh, maybe correct me, or if other people have other, <laughs> other thoughts and um, other explanations of what is a sandbox project um, and more resources, then please link that in the chat. I would also love to um, explore more further on. But yeah, and link that in the repository as well later. So these are Zenbox projects. And as you can see here, a bunch listed, but if we scroll down, we can see they are not, like it's not a super, super extensive list. Like this is still like a big list, but it's not as crazy as looking directly at the CNCF landscape. And by narrowing it down like this, we just, okay, we first landed on this page, right? We were like, oh my God, this is like, this is a lot to take in. But now that we narrow it down, we came to the sandbox project side, it's it's a bit more visible of like, okay, there are not that many projects if we kind of narrow it down more, right? And then if we look graduating and incubating projects, and these are projects that are more advanced or have already uh, fulfilled certain criteria to graduate from the from this program, let's say. <laughs> um, and as you can see here, you're also not that many projects. Now, if we're confused about what is sandbox incubating graduating, here are the different maturity levels that are listed here. And uh, also the details basically that you can find on what does it like, what does a project need to fulfill to be a graduating project? What criteria do they have to pass to, to move from sandbox to incubation to graduation? And at each level, they will get different support from the community, different um, interaction, I guess, in the community between the community and the project. And then as time passes and the projects become more reliable, um, they can move into incubation and graduation. Now at Sandbox, we usually have projects that are uh, maybe a bit crazy ideas, um, really technical maybe, and they are not as yet too adopted by the community. So if we're looking at Sandbox projects, we likely find, I guess, projects that are not, um, yeah, that, that, that don't have necessarily resources available that are created by the community. They are still in their starting phases um, of getting to that point uh, where more people are going to use it and where more people are going to use it in a way that has to be reliable and so on. And as time progresses and the project progresses, we will find more resources on them. But this is just really, I guess, useful to know when you're looking at the different projects that there are different type of projects. Now, looking at, again, at the CNCF landscape, we can filter by those different type of projects actually to make this a bit more, um, happier to look at, let's say. Uh, so where can we, where can we filter? Um, let's click here. No, this is not what I want to filter at. Um, let's see, let's click just through it. And no, this is also not what I wanted to filter at. I'm looking for the different types and I can't seem to find it. 
CNCF relation. That's the one. Okay, so I just want to filter by CNCF projects. Um, and as you can see, once I click the filter, right, uh, the number of, of different projects reduces by a lot. And I like to use here this analogy of like, first, when you get started in a new space, when you get started, for example, in the uh, cloud native ecosystem, when you come across this, it's quite overwhelming, right? You feel quite uh, maybe unsure, maybe a bit, um, you have this iffy feeling in your tummy, you're like, oh my God, what's going on, right? I don't know if that's uh, how you feel when you first looked at it. That's definitely how I first felt when I looked at this. Uh, but narrowing down the search and the different projects that are there can be quite helpful. Uh, maybe there you have different suggestions on how you would filter projects. So this is basically how I would go ahead if I'm not sure yet which resources to rely on. Like there are the CNCF resources, but there um, are also lots and lots of other resources. But the problem is as a beginner, you might not necessarily know which ones are reliable, which ones you should be focusing on and, and which ones uh, might be just might be community generated and opinionated, right? So this is one way to kind of navigate the space at the beginning, I guess. Now, I'm taking some informed guesses here. I'm saying informed guesses since I'm for sure not the, the best person to, or the most, um, uh, I guess, the most advanced person in the space to, to take those informed guesses. But um, when we get started with those different projects, a lot of them rely on using Kubernetes directly. They have maybe alternatives of not using Kubernetes with their setup, uh, but a lot of times you want to be using Kubernetes. So we first, let's go back to the drawing board and let's start filling out our, our roadmap. <laughs> Hello there, uh, Risha. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm keeping an eye out in the chat. So if you have any thoughts, anything, any comments on anything I'm showing you, drop that in the chat because this is literally just me talking, right? So uh, it's nice to have a conversation if you're the only presenter in a live stream, right? Uh, okay, so let's have a, I guess, let's have a starting point here. This is our starting point, okay? This is what we're gonna call start. Um, and we want to get started exploring the CNCF landscape. Now, I hope I'm doing this right here. And we want to first figure out what is the first step that we're gonna take, right? This is kind of the onboarding experience that you take. And you can, I guess, find a lot of these different mind maps online of like, um, this is your onboarding path into DevOps or into this and this uh, industry or space. And uh, ultimately it will rely a lot of times on your existing skill level, I guess. At least that's, that's how I would see it. Um, maybe comment your suggestions, your feedback, your thoughts on how you felt when you, the last time got started with a new topic. It could be any new topic, even like a new recipe that you cooked or something like, I don't know. Uh, but you have usually at the beginning, you have some questions, right? That has to, that have to be answered, right? And one of those questions might be, where do I get started? Or what do I learn first? What do I learn first? I hope you can see this. Um, I'm gonna to try to talk about everything I'm putting in here so you can, if you're watching on a mobile phone, you can still follow along. So don't be uh, intimidated by not seeing what I'm putting here. I'm also gonna put it later in this GitHub repository so you can find it there and um, put comments in issues and everything like that. Um, who else is in the chat? Okay, so somebody's saying, Arvin, I think, I, I don't know what your name is. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any name. Uh, I've always found, uh, out that starting with the CNCF trail map is always better than jumping into the CNCF landscape. What is the CNCF trail map? I'm not sure what the, do you have a link to the trail map? I don't know what it is. So <laughs> that might actually be helpful for this exercise here, right? Um, what diagram tool is this? This is Xcalidraw, which is a pretty cool tool that you can uh, use to draw these nice diagrams that we're gonna explore now. But so what do I want to learn first? So uh, as we figured out, a lot of these projects, where are they? Here, <laughs> they rely on Kubernetes to, to be used or they are enhancing Kubernetes and the use of Kubernetes in one way or another. Um, and that's why we likely want to get started with Kubernetes first. Need tests. Talking and writing is another challenge um, that I hopefully at the end of these streams get better used to. So with Kubernetes was actually the first graduating project from the CNCF. Now with Kubernetes, we can look at, um, well, the, I guess the Kubernetes starter resources that are leading them to exams and uh, diving into Kubernetes. That would be like the first thing, I guess. Um, so Kubernetes uh, overview 
of some sorts, um, how we want to call it. Again, Sayam is hosting a show that's uh, showing you how you can navigate uh, through the Kubernetes documentation and get started next week, has show us. So check that out if you want to get started with an overview of Kubernetes um, and related resources. Just keeping an eye on the chat. Um, Okay, just reading the chat. Um, okay, there's a question. If a well-structured and big project is made, can that be directly promoted to incubating level or the path will be the same? I think, I think, you know, I think the path is going to be the same. I don't think projects can jump the different levels. Where are we again? Here. I don't think they can just jump ahead. Um, I, I don't think that's the case since they, they want to enforce this really neutral governance structure of processes going through the same steps and becoming like a, a, a neutral, basically being within a neutral ground within the CNCF. Uh, I guess they can move at different paces depending on how they advance through those different stages, but I might be completely wrong. So that might also be wrong. Oh, here's the link to the trail map. Let's open that up. Um, okay, I'm opening up the CNCF trail map. Okay. Oh, yeah. I wanted to look at that in a second. Awesome. Thank you so much for suggesting that. So again, here we have, we will look at this in a second more. But here, I love this analogy of like navigating the forest when you're getting started with a new technology or new technologies, uh, kind of finding your way through. Uh, awesome. We will use this resource. This is amazing. So uh, let's assume we have taken over step and got started with Kubernetes. And now uh, we want to explore those different projects that are here within the CNCF landscape. And let me go back to the chat. Um, <laughs> awesome. Uh, keep the questions coming and comments and everything, all the input. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So uh, great. I love the input. Um, so what do we want to do next? So next we want to likely uh, look at how can we deploy applications? How can we deliver our applications and develop uh, with Kubernetes in mind for our deployments? Uh, now I'm hoping I'm using the right terminology here and people can follow. Um, okay. So just reading the chat. Uh, cool. So, um, how do we get started next? So next I would look at different, what are the different deployment tools that we can use? Now at this point, um, I personally used Helm as my first, like the first tool to make deployments happen uh, with Kubernetes. So I would suggest, okay, let's get started with Helm next. But then if we look at different, here different roadmaps, let's say, they are, uh, a lot of times there are other projects such as Argo that are recommended on uh, providing continuous delivery, on delivering those projects, let's say, uh, on Kubernetes. So let's split that down further, right? Like after we got started with Kubernetes, we want to get started now with um, different deployments. Delivery, deployment, del how should I call this? Application delivery? Hey, Dan. <laughs> oh, pop. I never know how to call you. <laughs> uh, welcome. So who else is in the chat? Oh, wow. We have some people watching now. Uh, that's exciting. Okay. So how I need your input here. How should I call this app delivery or deployment delivery? Take your best guesses in the chat CD. And let us guess something else, some more descriptive. What if you don't know what CD is and you're just getting started? Um, should I just write continuous delivery, but then application delivery. Let's write application delivery, application delivery. Okay. So we want to deliver our applications, right? So, um, from there, we can then look at different tools that help us to, to make that happen. Right now, going back to the CNCF landscape, um, there, Next to Argo, there are two other different projects, which we might then want to look at as well. Like again, we're just getting started, right? We want to explore the different projects that are available there and um, help us to, to navigate the space and to improve our use of Kubernetes as well and um, help us to get familiarized with the CNCF uh, landscape and the different projects within. So 
I'm going to put Helm here since it's not necessarily, I would put it here since it's not directly related to um, app delivery in the same way that those other tools, I don't know how to move to the side. Hmm. Uh, I should probably practice using this tool. Okay, so we're gonna put, ooh, we're gonna put this here, I guess, since I can't move right now to the side. And we're gonna just write Helm here. So I'm gonna zoom in now so you can all read this better. Um, so, and then we want to get started with different app delivery tools, projects, app delivery. Okay, app delivery sounds better, you're right. There's also, so the CNCF has a bunch of different initiatives that you can quite get lost in, but they also have different special interest groups, six, and they renamed it to tags, and I forgot what, what tag stands for right now. Uh, but there's one that's called app delivery. So if you're curious on that, there are different uh, working groups and similar that work on these kind of problems. So we want to get started with different projects that help us to better enhance, to enhance our deployments, let's say. So when we look at, well, the landscape, and then we look at this roadmap, it tells us, okay, we should probably, after we know about Kubernetes and continuization and all that good stuff, we want to get started with projects such as Argo. Now, I'm not going to read the details here because I'm not wearing my glasses, but also because uh, usually people don't have time or you can go into that in your free time and so on, right? So we just identified there's Argo on it, so we might want to check it out, right? And then we can look at other resources that also maybe reference Argo and that might help us to take to oh technical advisory group that's what tax tag stands for t-a-g so awesome technical advisory group yeah there are a bunch of them so if you're curious about this stuff there's um you might also want to check out david's live stream where he's going to show you how to contribute to those different projects now i'm going to show you how you get started with those projects and then david in his live stream he's going to show you how to <laughs> how to uh, basically contribute within an hour directly to those projects. So if you're curious about that, follow again here on, on Twitch. It's going to be probably really, really interesting. So I'm also going to looking forward to that. But here, let's continue with this roadmap. This is what we're here for, right? So we want to get... Uh, no, Argo, uh, uh, you have to write it correctly. So we have to use Argo. So if we look at Argo and I can't... Oh, it's getting me again directly to Argo. So... Uh, once we start looking at Argo, we can see, okay, it has something to do with workflows and pipelines, continuous delivery, rollouts, events. Now, at this point, I might not necessarily know what all of this stands for, which is completely <laughs> cool. Uh, I don't have to know all of that, right? A lot of times you will look at projects and you will look at their terminology and you're like, okay, I don't know what this means. And that's cool, right? You don't have to know that. Most people don't know. No, I, I hope people know. Some people know. But uh, this affirm, like this, basically what this tells us is that it has something to do with Kubernetes and workflows and um, let's just go through it. Yeah. So, um, I assume with deployments, if it's re referencing something like Canary and Blue Green, that usually refers to deployments here, we have deployment strategies. Okay, we keep Argo there, awesome. Um, now, we probably want to also look at some of the other projects that are listed here. Now, I haven't looked at these three, but you can maybe provide me some info in the chat of which thing you think I should add as well in addition to Argo. Um, or if I should not keep Argo in that roadmap, just drop it in the chat. That would be really cool. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just reading the chat. One second. The continuous part is important. Automatic app delivery to production from development through testing as a chain pipeline. Okay. The continuous delivery part, I agree. Okay, that's important. We will get to that. I think uh, with app delivery, I'm more referring to, we can keep it, we can write continuous delivery or something related. I think with app delivery, I think more generic of any, like just get any app to a place where it can be deployed, if that makes sense. Now we can completely rewrite this. Okay, I'm just gonna put uh, the other two, since they look big, right? I'm gonna put Flagger and Flux there, and then we see how we how we get on from there. Um, Flagger and Flux. Now at this point, I haven't checked out most of them, right? Like I'm probably as clueless as most people who get started. Now, once I know, 
I guess, how to deliver an application, how to, the, there are different projects that help me do that. Um, I want to look at what's next from there. Where do I go, right? Okay, I'm here now. Please load. Okay, so I have these two, right? I have focus on these, on these two parts. Um, now I want next look into observability analysis. Now, this already sounds quite advanced if you're just getting started, but maybe if you already have experience, just not experience with uh, use, doing it with those cloud native projects or with Kubernetes specifically, then this might be still, this might be really helpful, right? Um, those, those different projects and looking at that, and it might not be as scary as if you're just getting started. But if you're just getting started with all this, it might be quite scary to look at those projects, but we will get to that. Okay, so the next thing is just is observability and analysis. So we're going to add that here. Again, we're just going to create, I'm going to base my future streams off this roadmap, folks, okay? So the more you input, the more you're shaping my future streams, which would be amazing. I would highly appreciate your input. So if you have any thoughts of any project that really has to be included in this roadmap, just drop it in the chat, because even though we might not be finishing the entire roadmap today, um, I will still be reading the chat and I will see your comments and you can also reach out afterwards after the stream so I can put it into the roadmap. Um, and then we're going to get started with those different projects and basically they are onboarding resources in the next streams. So uh, I don't know your name, but somebody wrote in the chat, whenever you see incubating projects, what does that mean? Does it mean uh, could not pan out? I don't know what pan out is. I'm not a native speaker, but I guess like that it didn't work out or something. Um, why would you pick something incubating or untagged when they are a graduated project that confused me? That's a really amazing question. Okay, let's look at that first. Let me just put here analysis and so analysis and observe. Up. Let's put this in the next line. Up observability okay so we want to look at analysis and observability next oh then provided a link let's look at the link so this is the link that i have open here as well and here basically these are the sandbox projects and when a project so this is in my own terminology explained so let's say i'm a really amazing company or i'm um, I'm, I'm some person with some extra free time and I have a crazy idea and I get together with some other people at one of those cloud native conferences and we're like, hey, let's start this project, right? We think there is a need for this specific tool. Let's create an open source project that uh, is this tool. And then we create this amazing project or tool or something, right? Um, but obviously when we are working maybe from different companies or if we're all from the same company and we're working on a project, we have certain biases and we have certain interests in the direction of this project and so on. So we might want to have an independent entity that kind of takes care and um, houses of sorts uh, the project that we created and provides us with a structure to advance the project. And in that case, they are then given to the CNCF and it's like basically, here's this amazing project that we want to advance further. Here's our plan and how we want to advance it further. Help us advance it further. So in Sandbox, you can see a lot of um, interesting new projects that are maybe also quite experimental and that are not necessarily widely adopted by like getting there. They are basically advancing further. Um, oh, there's somebody from Eddie Hub. Hello. Uh, cool. So let's go back to this. Uh, yeah. So um, there's, uh, no, I got distracted. I distracted myself. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so they are really cool projects here, right? Some are really experimental and really crazy and um, help us to do really cool stuff that might be, however, really, really niche, right? Maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe some of them have ideas that are not yet tested or not yet advanced to the to the level that uh, they really should be adopted by a lot of a lot of companies and projects, right? So um, a lot of these project, all these projects, then start off as sandbox, and then from there they advance further. Here's oh, here's a ha, huh, here's a you can read this. Good, yeah. Thank you for the suggestion, Pop. Um, awesome. Here. Those are the, the different goals. So you can read about that. This is just my interpretation of it. And then at some point they get into, they're voted by those uh, technical advisory tech groups. 
um, they are previously called six, they are voted into, they can be voted into incubation if they fit certain criteria. And from there onwards, they get different support from the CNCF and they can uh, advance further within the CNCF to become graduating project. Now they have to uh, show a certain number of community involvement and a certain maturity level for their project. So if you get started with a new project, like especially I mean, if it's for your learning experience, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't say it mattered as much. Um, if you get started uh, with sandbox or incubating projects, Kat is gonna have tomorrow a first live stream with, uh, I think Tinkerbell it was, I don't know Tinkerbell, but it's a project that's a sandbox project, I believe. And she's gonna interview some of the maintainers who are creating Tinkerbell. Um, and so it, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use those projects. It just means that there might be, since the project is not around for that long and hasn't reached such a traction in the community yet, that there might be a few less resources available for you to get started. So this is like some of the aspects I would keep in mind when you're getting started with sandbox using sandbox projects um, and then obviously like uh, the different support available by those projects themselves um, how they are currently used by projects in um, development or production environments and similar so with incubating and graduating projects you can place higher generally higher confidence in those projects and the resources that you should be Every, able to find. That's what I would say. Maybe some other people in the chat have other comments, other suggestions and thoughts on this. Uh, but this is a really, really good question. So thank you for that question. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't mean, I, I'm not sure if, if, I guess some projects can stay in sandbox and then just I don't know, die? I'm not sure. I don't want to say anything wrong, but like, I, don't, I guess not make it into incubation. I guess that could happen. I, I wouldn't know why it shouldn't, like why it could not happen, but I guess the, the general path is that there's a commitment, like once it's within the CNCF, that there's also a certain, like especially from incubation onwards, there's a certain level of commitment within the community. Um, what drawn map binds to the 100 days of Kubernetes? I will get to that as well. That's also a really good question. How is the map related to 100 days of Kubernetes? Now, this is 100 days specifically for the CNCF landscape. And let's continue a bit with the roadmap. And then I can kind of detail on how it relates as well to 100 days of Kubernetes as, um, as a personal project, I guess. Comment maybe plus one if you also want to hear about how it relates to, like this roadmap relates to maybe other initiatives. Now. I really like this path here once it loads, uh, this path of like, how do you get started? What are the different tools that you should be looking at? Um, this is super, super handy since it breaks down obviously a lot of these projects. Now we have over here, we have Prometheus, we have Jaeger and I can't, we have Open Tracing and Fluent D. Okay, so we will add Prometheus, we will add Open Tracing and there was another one here that I, I guess I would look at. Um, where are they here? Oh, here, Thanos. Okay, let's add those. Let's add those here, maybe five. I have never, should I add Cortex? I haven't looked at Cortex. So I need your input here, okay? I haven't, I haven't looked at most of these. So if you know, if you know these projects here on the right, maybe I can zoom in. Let me zoom in for a second. Okay, if you have seen these projects here on the right before, Comment in the chat which ones I should add definitely to the roadmap. And remember, this roadmap is for people who are just getting started within the cloud native landscape ecosystem. Okay, so comment in the chat if just, I don't know, maybe the ones that which logo you like best. Can I zoom in on this? Yeah, here. Okay, which logo do you like best or which project here should I get started on? Um, if you're on a, maybe on a mobile screen so you can see this better. Okay, let's zoom out again and go back to full screen. No, this is um, this is just my face. You don't want to see my face. So, <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, Prometheus. Okay, I should get started with Prometheus. Um, what else? I want to. Okay, more questions on 100 days of Kubernetes. We will get to those in a second as well. Okay, Prometheus and I have Fluent D. So let's add those first. Um, I will look at all those projects we put here. Okay, so the more you suggest, the more content I will have. <laughs> uh, okay. Prometheus, I hope I spell it everything correct, Prometheus, and Fluent D, is it called that? I haven't looked at it, let's look it up, Fluent D CNCF, like that, 
let's just Google. We Google here a lot, okay? Um, let's look at this. What else can we look at? Let's look at this. What is this about? Okay. Okay, this is an announcement. We don't want to look at announcements. Okay, spotlight. Awesome. Now, I want to just have a primer. Where can I find a primer on FluentD? This one should give me a primer now. Okay, here we go. Okay. Bolt Unified Logging Layer. Okay, it's a logging system. Awesome. So it belongs there. Cool. We keep it. Okay. And then there was... What else was there? There was... Okay, we have Next, we have Jaeger, we have Cortex, we have Thanos. Which one should I add? <laughs> okay, there's, there's a really long comment that I want to read out loud because I think it's amazing if you put the effort into putting long comments in the chat. So, um, Yati, Yati, I don't know how your name is pronounced. Um, also keep in mind that this is open source. If the project makes it to Sandbox, they are already showing a commitment to build a sustainable community. Even if they do not make to an other CNCF level, they could still have a strong enough community to continue for years and years. Being open source means a group using the software can help maintain it as well. That's a really, really great comment. Yeah, really, really great comment. Um, it makes complete sense. Yeah, when, when a project is donated, there's already a certain level of involvement, either by companies and, in, and other interest groups, other entities, and just generally the community of maintaining and keeping this project moving. Um, so that's generally what you will get from Sandbox projects already. Um, really great point. Thank you for parading that in the chat. Okay, so we want to add, I'm just gonna add Thanos because it sounds really cool. And uh, yeah. That's where we add it. <laughs> um, okay, I haven't actually, I don't know. I don't know which projects I have actually used. Don't tell anybody, but um, yeah. Okay, so open tracing got mentioned a lot of times. So I think we should add it. Now you can disagree in the chat and you can provide other inputs. Um, this is a collaborative effort just to remind you, right? Uh, but I'm gonna add open, open tracing, tracing. I can't type while I'm talking, okay. So we have analysis and observability. Awesome. So we have those figured out. Uh, maybe let's make this a bit nicer. Can I, uh, how do I make it nicer? So, and let's remove the background or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm not making this nicer right now. Let's delete this. <laughs> okay. So what do we want to get started next? So we have like about 30 minutes of the stream left or however long I feel like a fancy going on, I guess. Um, no, but okay. What do we want to look at next here? Going back to this. I like this roadmap. Um, okay. We can also, let's just look up CNCF, CNCF learning roadmap. Now, I looked it up before because I was curious on what I would find, but I'm also looking it up now so you can see all the stuff that people can find here. So, um, beginner's guide, this is what I'm looking for. Um, here again, we have the trail map. This is amazing. This is really great. And then we have a bunch of different training resources. So again, there are going to be live streams for training and, um, well, specifically how to get started with the with the certification by Sayam next week. So check that out and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with all of those amazing live streams that are coming up now, right? So beginner's guide, this is what we found now, okay? So here, again, you can find different explanations and I guess I should have read that before the live stream. Next time I'm gonna be better prepared, I swear, maybe. But so we have Kubernetes, we have already that, we have Helm, into app development. Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, this is for example, see here also here sandbox projects listed. So if they're listed in an onboarding guide, I think we can use it, right? We can use sandbox projects. What do you think? Maybe comment in the chat. You think we can use it? Should I include telepresence? Is that still a, hmm? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. What is this? Um, Okay, for Kubernetes and OpenShift microservices. So I don't know if I, should I include this? Yes, no? Any suggestions, any thoughts? Should I include this? Okay, I will leave this hanging here. Should I include telepresence or not since it's given here within the onboarding guide? You can decide that for me um, if you want it to be included. I'm gonna give it a few seconds. You can provide your thoughts on whether or not I should be including it 
Yes, I should be including it, Kunal. Who else is yes? It, it, right now, just Kunal is gonna make the decision if you not post anything. So, I mean, let's see, right? <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna leave this hanging. You can vote on this. You want to have this project here included? Yes or no? Telepresence 2 is open source and available to preview now. I have, let's just include it. I mean, yes, it can't hurt, right? It can't hurt. Okay, let's just, I'm tired of typing now. And I feel like I'm not getting far with typing and speaking. Ooh, this is not what we want. Um, we want this one. And we want to have telepresence here. Oh, this is a bit now. I will correct it later on before I post it into the Git repository. You will find all the resources here, okay? So I will post all the resources here. So don't worry right now. Um, okay, so we're not this far yet. We have analysis and observability. Now, what do we want next? Uh, let's go back to our beginners. We have monitoring, okay. We have open, well, we didn't include that. Did we include Cortex? Okay, I guess. Since it's part, these are sandbox projects, right? So in Prometheus is graduated, so open metrics, cortex. Should I include one of those? Should I include both? Okay, somebody commented. I think, I, I don't know if that's your name or username. I think it's your username. Uh, but somebody commented, kind of interesting how most of those projects for analysis use Go as a language and then FluentD is Ruby. Wonder why. Yeah, a lot of projects use Ruby and then Go. Um, Interesting thought. Um, so logging tracing, fluent. We have included that. We have open tracing. We have Jaeger. Okay, so they broke it down further here. And container registries, storage and databases. Maybe we want to use. We want to look at storage and databases. I think. Oh, I have never looked at those projects. Okay, let's include incubator. Okay, incubator. Okay, so let's include storage and databases from here onwards. I guess this is then getting more advanced. So I guess you can take different paths. Let's make one of those paths storage and databases. And the other one, we can make something else, okay? So we're gonna include this here. Ooh. This is sometimes really difficult to navigate, but I guess it's really pretty to use. So storage and, and, no, and uh, databases basis if you type correctly okay so here we go cool there's more in the chat awesome okay people agree I should include um was it open no which one was it it was telepresence so we leave telepresence there now I need to move over here somehow oh now I'm on the left Ooh, this is like this is fascinating to navigate this tool. Okay, and then what do we add on the right? Let's go back maybe to our CNCF landscape. Okay, we are back here. What else can we include? So you have here different headers that basically summarize the different categories of those projects. Um, so maybe once we have looked at, um, yeah, once we have looked at app delivery, and we have looked at analysis and observability. Maybe we want to look at how do we scale traffic? How do we manage the traffic to our application? So maybe we want to look at those different projects that are listed here. Now, do you have any thoughts on which one? I only know LinkedIn, I think, from these ones here. And Contour, I think, I have, I have not used directly. So which ones should I include here? That's the next question. Um, yeah, you can watch this live stream again. Now, if you're in the chat right now, I would love from, to hear from you which ones you think should be included in a, in a learning roadmap. What do you think? Um, I guess I will just go ahead and include, let's put here maybe um, scaling. No, how should we call it? Um, traffic management, traffic. I mean, service mesh would be like one aspect of this, but I guess like a lot of these projects here are ultimately focusing on other parts as well. Um, so maybe there's some, maybe we want to call this differently. Um, maybe we call this, tra yeah, just management, traffic management, traffic. I don't know, I can't think of a better word right now. Traffic management, I don't know. Let's just call it that and just refer to all of those projects here. So I, I'm, I'm roughly summarizing right now. Maybe that's like a horrible idea. Um, 
You don't have to know anything to suggest. Just whatever you feel like looks the prettiest. That's, <laughs> I mean, no. Let's, okay, let's look at those, right? Uh, let's look at these different projects. Here, we can click on them and then we can, here, this is the first candidate. Okay, I'm gonna give you now a different, I don't know, different candidates that you can, that we can decide upon, okay? What we're gonna include. Let's do it this way. Okay, it has 7,000 stars on GitHub. That sounds like a lot. It, here's the website. So let's look at the website of Core DNS, DNS and Service Discovery. That sounds highly useful to me. Again, it's the first time I'm looking at it. I don't know what to include either, right? So it's fast and flexible. That sounds great. Okay, it's used by some people. <laughs> I'm probably not giving this project justice. This is probably a really amazing project. No, I think we should include this, right? Should we? Let's add it. Okay, let's add it. Sounds great. Let's add it. How was it called again? Uh, core DNS. <laughs> okay, let's add Core DNS here. Core DNS. Okay, we're gonna look at that. That passed. Check mark. Okay, so let's look at the next one. You can vote up or down. Etcd. I think that should be included since that's probably related directly to Kubernetes. Now I haven't looked at this specifically, right? It's yeah. Let's let's look at this, right? Yeah. I mean, wow, that's a lot of stars, right? That should be included. Okay. And I feel probably, don't tell anybody I don't know these projects. I feel like I should know what this actually, I mean, etcd is like the data storage within Kubernetes. Now you're testing my knowledge of Kubernetes here. Um, so I think it's pretty important. It sounds to me pretty important. So I think, especially if it has so many stars, let's give it a star. Where can I give it a star? Um, here, let's give it a star. So always start what you're using or what gets you excited, helps them. So next, should we look at this? I feel like the, the bigger listed ones here are more important in this case. Sorry about this little project here. So what is this one? This one also has a lot of stars. No, maybe we can't make the decision solely on stars, right? What do you think? Yeah, don't pop, don't, don't test me on these things. I'm not gonna, I, we forget whatever happens on the stream. That's basically how it works. Um, okay, should I, should I be looking, should we be looking at this one? I guess so. Let's check it out. What is this? High performance open source universal RPC framework. That sounds also important. Yeah, don't test me on my knowledge. Um, should we add this? GRPC, GRPC. Okay, I'm gonna add it because somebody in the chat said yes. Okay, somebody else heard a lot about this project. That means we should add it. If you hear a lot about it, that means it's important, I guess. Or it did something bad, but I, I will go with the former positive, okay? Positive assumptions taken here. Okay, so what else? What else do we want to end? Why? I, that sounds, I mean, I've heard, I mean, yeah. Let's just add all of them. I mean, we can probably exclude later on, right? Okay, Envoy, Envoy, do I pronounce it right? Envoy and Contour, Contour. Let's look at it. Uh, high performance ingress controller for Kubernetes. That sounds exciting, I guess. Um, <laughs> let's just add them all, okay? So how, I hope I, I Contour, okay, I want to write everything correctly so I'm not getting people reach out and be mad later on. Con no, I, I, I so screwed it up. Con contour. Con contour, okay, this is just me really screwing up. Okay, so Envoy is another one. Falco, but Falco is gonna go later into security. No, we can't, we can't jump ahead, I guess. I mean, this is still, this is still not, this is still not security, right? This is like, this is traffic management, I guess. So we include then um, Envoy. Envoy, is that how you write it? Did I write it correct? Okay, and then we include also, we want to include, there was another one, another bigger one. So we have all of these, right? We have all of these. Now we want to include Linkerd, I guess, as well. Now, and then we get into storage and runtime that I know a little about. 
and networking I also know a little about and we we are there we are getting there okay uh linkerd we will include that i hope i pronounce it right as well and linkerd like that okay let's edit what else how about thanos okay thanos we have included no thanos is here in analysis we are we are basically here this is our roadmap so far okay this is like the different areas we're going to be looking at um now, I don't want to put specific, like, these are really just like projects, right? And this gets us, I guess, to the question that we had earlier. Let's address the question we had earlier a lot about 100 days of Kubernetes. Um, <laughs> because if, you, if you're watching this and you might come from one of my social channels, you might have come across 100 days of Kubernetes. And the thing is, here in this live stream, we're going to be looking at specifically those projects and how to get started with those projects. So let's assume you're completely new to the CNCF landscape or you're new, but you or maybe you're not new, but you want to get started with different projects. Where do you get started and how do you get started with those projects ultimately? So uh, this is not going to tell you like learn about service mesh, learn about uh, the, th the theory behind X and Y, but more um these are the projects that you can be learning about and this is how you would get started maybe with those projects um i will publish this map i will publish this map here on my github repository so and then i will share it also on my twitter channel twitter channel twi twitter i will share it on my twitter so you can also find it there and then you can comment and you can tell me what to change and then we can shape this further on after the stream this is just to kick it off okay but i really need your input afterwards okay and your feedback on which projects you think are more important to look at versus others now these are already some really amazing projects and i might have to summarize some of them in the streams but we will get there okay these are like some big categories and we can also probably break them down further but to get back to the original question what is the difference between this and uh learning about kubernetes or i mean if you're learning about kubernetes let's approach from that perspective if you're learning about the technology such as kubernetes you will likely come across different projects such as helm or argo or uh, prometheus and so on already so if you're learning about containers and kubernetes you might come across them already and you will use them as part of your learning journey to understand the technology. Now that would be that something that I would, for example, put the theory of those different technologies. That's what I would put as part of like a learning journey, such as 100 days of Kubernetes, which is like focus of what is the learning journey of learning Kubernetes across 100 days. And this is really focused on, okay, how do you get started with those different projects? Again, if you want to get started with Kubernetes, and if you're interested in learning about these things and an overview and so on, I highly suggest you to join Sayam's stream next week because he's gonna walk you through the Kubernetes documentation and show you how to get started with the Kubernetes documentation. So if you are curious about advancing your Kubernetes skills level up, then that's definitely for you. We are going to be looking at what are these beginner resources, starter resources available on these different projects. Now I have to, ooh, how do I get to the right side again? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, great. So. What happens if I reload this? I'm scared to reload it without saving it. Um, I mean, okay, now I'm back, centered more. Anyway, so um, with these projects, we're gonna be looking at what are the beginner resources, the starter resources available? Um, what are the resources somebody who's new to it would look at? And what does it look like to spin up your first use case with those projects? That's basically what we're gonna do in the next live streams. Um, so this is just starting point of us then feeding off of this kind of roadmap and obviously this will this will change likely throughout the next live streams so you can still comment and put your thoughts in like this is really this is supposed to be interactive because as you can tell I'm just I'm just talking to you here <laughs> so I love your input whether through issues or on Twitter and comments so again I'm gonna be publishing it here so more questions is Go important to learn Kubernetes or use it in these projects? No, Le knowing Go is a programming language. I wouldn't say it's important. I would say it's useful in some cases, um, since a lot of these projects rely on their backend on Go, or you might well have to use some customization in Go to use some of these projects. But generally, I'm my programming skills are really bad, <laughs> like not not that advanced, let's say. But me using Kubernetes doesn't or 
using these platforms effectively and doing a good job. Otherwise, I, I hope I'm doing a good job so far. Um, anyway, it doesn't like it doesn't prevent me from doing that just because my Go skills are not as advanced, let's say. Um, so that's a good question, but I don't think Go is important. Maybe other people have other suggestions. You can also contribute to a lot of these projects if you do not know any programming language yet, right? You can contribute to doc documentation. You can provide feedback there. There's an amazing talk from KubeCon EU that you should check out if you're interested in contributing on like contributing if you're not a programmer because you can provide so much input, like so much input if you're not a programmer and you're looking at those projects because you will approach it from a completely different perspective than a programmer. And a lot of times actually, oh, nice, kubernetes.dev. What is that? I get so easily distracted. Welcome to the here. Let's check that out. This is a cool. See, Kubernetes.dev. If you're interested in contributing, thank you for sharing. Awesome. So you can, I mean, there are different ways on how you can get involved. And a lot of times not filing up here, but helping to replicate issues and solve bugs and so on is a lot or solve issues for people and help other people get onboarded on this project is a lot more valuable for maintainers because then they can focus on other things um, th than filing PRs and um, yeah and getting started in that way of contributing. So it really depends, but you don't have to be a super duper programmer to contribute. That's that's basically my my thoughts on that subject. Um, awesome, you attended the talk. Great. I hope you liked it. Cool. So um, we are nearly doing this like for an hour now. Oh, I'm talking a lot. Uh, I, I hope you're not tired of me talking yet. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is a bit annoying. Let's let's try to get back to the. Ooh, how do I do that? Okay. Oh, cool. It changed somehow. I made a change. Okay. So we want to get started also with storage. Now they are obviously different opinions of whether you should use storage in Kubernetes. Um, if you've looked at Kubernetes yet, it's it, it blows up really easily. It's just and then you have to recreate everything. <laughs> but uh, you can use storage, right? Awesome. Yeah, yay! No code contributions at KubeCon. Yeah, there are lots of lots of different ways that you can get involved, such as watching this live stream and helping me figure this stuff out, right? That's also a really valuable contribution that I highly value personally, um, and other community members for sure. Since contributing in the chat also takes a lot, right? It's not it's not that straightforward um, to provide your thoughts in the chat, and there's really nothing wrong you could say in the chat or right. Just be respectful and uh, provide your input and your feedback. So storage. That's the last thing we're gonna look at. And I think then we're good for now. Let's look at this, like these areas, right? Again, I haven't looked at those projects. I know about Rook. It's actually here, it's on my bottle, if you can see it, <laughs> um, the logo, but that's that's it. So we want to look at different storage solutions or this, this area, let's say, of the roadmap. Let's look at this area. And then later on, I guess, oh, we also, and security promise we look at security. So let's look at, let's just include work first and move on to security. And then we can add other projects here because I don't want to spend too much time looking at the other projects right now. But we're going to add Rook just because I feel like, why is this so tiny now? Oh, okay. This is really tiny now. What have I done? Okay. This is reset. Okay. This might make it better. Okay. And then we want to move on to security. Now, in both cases, we will need security, right? In either case, we need, we need to make sure that what we're doing is actually secure and not, not secure. I don't know. Anyway, so. This is like the, uh, the the time of the day where something I'm saying miss, doesn't necessarily make sense. Anyway, so security, security. We want to look at that as well. So I might be wrong, but shouldn't etcd be storage in database category as it works as a database in? Yeah, that's a good point. It was just up there with like the other solutions here. So that's why I put it there. Let's put it down here and delete this part, I guess. So let's put it down there at CD. That's a good point. See, you providing input is really helpful. I just, I guess I just put it there, but I, I would, yeah, I guess. Where was it? Where was it CD? Here. 
Yeah, it was kind of, I mean, but then... It's a bit vague, right? Like, why is it there if it's... I'm not sure. Maybe somebody has some thoughts on why it's here instead of within, like, um, database kind of related solutions or storage or so on. Anyway, let's look at security and compliance. Let's check out those different projects. Open policy agent. That sounds important. I don't know what it is yet, but it sounds important. So we might want to add that. Let's add it, right? Uh, maybe you have, have you looked at that before? Open policy agent. No, like I might be wrong too. I might be as wrong as everybody here. How do we know we are right? Maybe everybody's consistently wrong and we never know that we are right, right? Like somebody in the chat commented, might be wrong, might be right, who knows, right? I don't know, I feel like everything chains off Kubernetes, but projects only exist because of it. That's a good question. I think we will answer that question throughout the next live streams. Like what projects only exist because of Kubernetes? I mean, I, I guess a lot of these projects only exist because of Kubernetes or like to enhance Kubernetes and in various ways. So when we look at those different projects, we will look at can you use it without Kubernetes or is it like specific to you using Kubernetes in the first place? So that's definitely one of those areas. Did the CNCF exist before Kubernetes? No, I, okay, no, you're testing me here. Um, so um, hmm. uh, I, I don't want to say anything wrong because I might be completely wrong here. But so basically, Kubernetes comes from another project within Google that was called, I don't know how it was called. Um, <laughs> and I forgot the name. So, um, and then it got basically the CNCF formed and Kubernetes got donated. Borg, ha, huh, thank you, Dan. Ha, huh, he knows it. Um, so it, so there was Borg at Google and that is, uh, is it still there? I wonder. Anyway, so basically there, that's what Kubernetes comes from. And then it, the CNCF formed. And um, I think in response to it get, oh, hmm. I wonder right now if, if Kubernetes got, came first and then the CNCF formed to facilitate it, or I think it was the other rounds we had then CNCF was formed and then Kubernetes was given to the CNCF, but I might be wrong here. We can talk about this next time as well. Uh, there might be, there are probably way better videos than this one. Yeah, so we had, okay, so we agree here in the chat now that we had, uh, we had Kubernetes come from Borg from Google and this is a while ago since I looked into it. And then the CNCF woman was like, hey, there's this amazing space. It's going to form around this. And we're going to need something like this anyway, because everything is moving to containers. So we're going to start this cool project. And <laughs> no, we're going to form the CNCF. And then they got Kubernetes. And Kubernetes was the first one that graduated from the CNCF. And then they, well, other projects got donated as well. And then basically this onboarding path formed around it of getting from sandbox into graduation. Oh, it was, okay. It was announced alongside Kubernetes 1.0 an open source container cluster manager, which was contributed to the Linux foundation by Google as a seed technology. Chat knows. So thank you. <laughs> uh, next time I will be more prepared. So we are looking at that security. Now I have to include I could be mean and not include some project. No, we are going to include all those projects, I think. Okay. The update, for, it's the first time I hear about this. I don't know what this is. Is this something that should be included? The update framework. I don't know what it is. It's, I have never heard anybody talk about it. Maybe it's something useful in different projects. I don't know. Okay. Um, cool. So Falco, we should include Falco, I believe. Should we include Falco? Vote in the chat. No, I'm gonna include Falco, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> let's include Falco here as well, right? Cool. So, security. There are not many, I would have thought, see, like, when you look at this map at the beginning, you come to it with some assumptions. I mean, I've, I'm curious what assumptions you have before looking at it, or how you felt the first time that you looked at this, um, but, I would have thought there are more security and compliance related tools than these. Maybe I'm wrong. 
Um, oh, Kubernetes just turned seven years old on June 6th. That's a nice fact. Thank you for sharing. That's really cool. Okay, notary. I've heard about that one. We should include that. We should look at that, right? Okay, let's include that as well. So, notary. Awesome. Okay, so this is our roadmap this far, what we're gonna be looking at. Now again, I'm gonna post this so you can contribute, you can provide your thoughts and maybe some of the other projects that you want to be looking at because again, we didn't, we want to probably eventually look at key management. There are two incubating projects. Let's look at key management as well. Let's add those two and then we added these. I think we're pretty good. I mean, later we might want to look also at K3S. Um, if there are any other projects that I've not listed yet, you might want to reach out. Okay, so Spiff, oh, the Spiff project. Key management doesn't seem to be too popular, huh? There are only like a few hundred stars on each of them. Um, okay, Spiff and Spire. Spiff and Spire, okay, I have to think about how we write that. Let's include this as well as last thing kind of, right? Key manage, management, management. Oh, you have to write, con man okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so Spiff and Spire will be included. That sounds so weird when you say it. Um, I hope I, and Spire? Let's look it up. Okay, Spire. Okay, cool. Spire. So we are going to be looking at these as well as part of security, I guess, afterwards. So this is our roadmap this far, what we've analyzed now here. So uh, I think this is a really good starting point. I'm going to be posting all of, I'm going to be including all of the resources that I've used here in to, to make this roadmap happen, let's say. Um, so if you find anything that's, that's particularly interesting to you and or any any project that we have not looked at from this roadmap, then please do reach out, get in touch, just drop me a message or join the future chats and provide input there. Now, I'm not sure if there's something I've missed right now in the chat. Um, maybe there's something I missed. Okay, Opa should be included. No, uh, was that what the message was about? Let's see. Um, I think I've addressed pretty much most of in the chat. Let's see uh, if there's nothing, if there's something I haven't addressed it, now's the time to post it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, now's the time for you to post it. Is this roadmap sufficient for hundred days of code? So this is also great. Okay. This is now we spin off from the, from this topic here a bit slightly. So, but this is interesting. So there are different projects called, we have 100, well, 100 days of Kubernetes, 100 days, days of code. This is a project that has nothing to do directly with the CNCF or Kubernetes. Then we have uh, 100 days of cloud, which is also an independent project for you to get onboarded in the cloud ecosystem. And I started 100 days of Kubernetes. Oh, that should actually, let's ooh. 100 days of Kubernetes. No, you have to, oh, today I'm, I'm getting tired, huh? So 100 days of Kubernetes. So now I figured it out. Okay, so these are all independent projects that kind of rely on the same principle of you get started with something for 100 days and you aim to learn it within 100 days and advance in that area within 100 days. Now, as you can see here, this is all really Kubernetes specific. Now, this is for 100 days of Kubernetes. Now in 100 days for this live stream, we're gonna be focusing on getting started with these different projects. What is the onboarding experience like? What are the starter resources that are available like? And then basically, how do we start it the quickest way? Uh, so that's basically the idea. Um, if you want to communicate with the team, uh, yeah, awesome, then just dropped in the channel um, that there's also, we have a GitHub repository where we manage those streams. So if you have any thoughts, any feedback, any th suggestions or so on, then you can also drop that there as well. Um, 
yeah so that's basically the difference and with that i think this was really this was a great live stream let me just change to my video only so thank you so much for joining this was really amazing i'm going to share all of these resources Follow me on Twitter and subscribe here to this channel for future live streams. As mentioned, we will have tomorrow, we have Kat of Kat's Classroom, I think it's called. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and she's going to interview different maintainers from this, from this project, from within the CNCF landscape. So they are going to provide her with a true one-on-one -on -one onboarding um, theoretical uh, background of what is this project? Why would you use it? How would you use it? Now, next week, we're also going to have Sayam, who's going to provide you with um, a live stream on how you get started with Kubernetes, specifically with Kubernetes documentation and prepare for your exams. So subscribe here on Twitch to stay up to date and be notified about all those cool live streams and future live streams and every live stream in between that you can see in the trailer. And I'm going to post a roadmap and other resources as well as the GitHub repository of those resources on my Twitter in a bit. So stay tuned for that. If there's nothing else in the chat, I'm going to close the stream now. Thank you so much for joining. Have